Hello, my name is Richard Weitz. I am the Senior Fellow and Director of the Center for Political Military Analysis here at the Hudson Institute. I'm here today, October 22nd, to talk about the recent meeting that took place between Iran, Russia, the United States, and France at the headquarters of the International Atomic Energy Agency in Vienna uh, on the last few days, October 19th through 21st. The delegations from those countries met to discuss the final details about an agreement that they, that they reached in principle in Geneva, October 1st, uh, by which Iran could obtain some high enriched uranium, which it needs to run its research and medical reactor in Tehran. Uh, the, uh, the, the principal agreement is that Iran will take some of its, or prep the bulk of its uh, low enriched uranium, about 80 percent, transfer it to Russia, where it would be enriched further from 3 percent to, to almost 20 percent. From Russia, the newly enriched uranium would be transferred to France, be manufactured into fuel cells, and then transferred back to Iran, and it would allow Iran to use, uh, to run its research reactor. Uh, which it also uses to make medical isotopes and other purposes, which uh, is based in, in downtown Tehran. The uh, supply of fuel that Iran uh, required originally for this reactor from Argentina is running out, and, and it should be exhausted probably about a year now, from now. The Iranian government had been inquiring where it, it might be able to acquire additional fuel supplies uh, for this reactor. With the when the administration, the U.S. administration, uh, heard about it, there was a concern that if Iran did not obtain this supply, they would, the Iranians would use their own facilities to enrich the uranium further. And the problem is, if it is enriched yet one more round, it could be used more readily in a nuclear weapon if it becomes weapons-grade uranium. So the U.S. administration, when President Obama was in Moscow in July, reached an agreement with the Russians in principle to offer a deal to Iran by which Iran could use Russia and France, which can manufacture these fuel cells, to do the enrichment for Iran. And the Iranians, um, for various reasons, have agreed in principle to do this. And now it looks like they're re ready to, to, to agree to the final agreement, but we won't know for sure for tomorrow. The advantages of this proposal, uh, would, would, from the administra U.S. administration's point of view, is that it would serve as a mechanism to t remove a lot of the low enriched uranium, which Iran now has, but has no clear purpose for use uh, in for peaceful purposes, since it doesn't have an active nuclear reactor that needs that fuel. Russia's fueled the one nuclear reactor that Iran might have soon independently. Uh, in addition, it's thought to be something of a confidence measure. If the Iranian government can reach this agreement with the international community on this one issue, perhaps you could reach a larger agreement on the nuclear question and some regional security arrangements. Uh, the uh, critics of the deal have expressed concern on several points. One, it, it legitimizes the Iran's enrichment of uranium since it accepts that the a uh, large quantity of, of low enrichment Iranian, uh, low enriched uranium that Iran now has has been accepted as legitimate. So, in essence, you're de facto recognizing Iran's right to enrich uranium, which is something the UN Security Council and the U.S. government, both the Bush administration and Obama administration, has opposed. Um, in addition, there's some concerns about if you when this uranium goes back, whether whether Iran will be able to use it to in turn enrich a little further to make a bomb. Uh, what, whether Iran will continue making low enriched uranium while this uranium is being made into a fuel cell. So the negotiations are trying to, to reconcile, the, to address these critiques by requiring Iran to turn over a large quantity of this uranium now rather than in stages, uh, and with some kind of secure guarantees that the, uran that the uranium, when it goes back to Iran, would be used for the, the reactor itself, piece of purpose is not disassembled and, and, and the Iranians gaining access to high enriched uranium. The Iranian government, in turn, has expressed some concerns about the cost. Uh, some, they want some kind of guarantee that they'll actually get the uranium back. There's some concerns with France. They've had some problems with France in the nuclear realm in, in earlier, so they want to deal mainly with Russia. And the way it's probably going to work is that France will be a subcontractor to Russia on this deal. Um, what is interesting is that uh, there's been some recent revelations that have come out about a meeting that, that took place in late September between delegates from Iran and Israel at an unofficial meeting of a group 
uh, dealing with, uh, run by Australia and Japan that deals with nuclear nonproliferation, nuclear security issues. The Iranians have said this meeting never took place. Uh, the Israelis and other sources have confirmed it did take place, but refused to go into details. But it appears it's a, it's a, it's, it's a potential sign that there might be some opportunities for dialogue down the line, even if at the time what appears to have taken place is a simple exchange of views uh, and not any major agreement. But now we're all eagerly looking forward to the Iranian response, and we we'll hope to continue the discussion further. Thank you.